appropriate to sort of clear the air on two naval subjects. It bothers me that you've got so much speculation. But the people who should be commenting and speculating are those who have walked in those shoes. So I'm going to address the two collisions that the Navy has had out in Westpac. That's most unfortunate because those are two very capable destroyers <coughs> and have the capability to shoot down missiles and all things like that. Now, nothing in life is foolproof or perfect. We know that. But we have in this Navy our system of navigating ships throughout the world as foolproof system as any. I have six different, I mean four different Navy commands, destroyers and cruisers, so I know what the hell we're talking about. And we have enough backups aboard a ship between the radars, the lookouts, common sense, electronic equipment, to track any possible situation. It doesn't make any difference whether you're in the middle of the ocean alone or in the Straits of Malacca. You can still handle the number. And it's all visually displayed and tracked by numerous people on watch. So those two instances are 100% personnel error. I can sort of understand something. My background, we were taught by people who were World War II. A lot of practical experience. And as, as the 60s came, the 70s came, more and more electronics, sophisticated electronics, came aboard ships. And people, of course, paid attention to those electronics. A lot of people sort of put the preference on electronics instead of the common sense, the eyeballs, and the actual tracking. And I think over a period of time, people have become sloppy and tend not to use the common sense <coughs> things that we have. And the result is, look what happened. Now you can say the bosses. Well, the bosses, all the admirals now, have come after me. And so, so some of our training of those people must not have got through. <laughs> but I think you're going to find out that, yes, it's personnel error, but uh, uh, undue um, reliance upon electronic things. Maybe they're texting their damn girlfriends. I don't know. But I just want to make clear to you that it's not some mysterious happenings, it's personnel error. That's most unfortunate because people were on the first destroyer I went aboard, we had a sim we had a similar situation. A destroyer hit us, doing 25 knots, just about cut us in half. I was a damage control officer, and um, that really impressed me about the Navy. The captain called me up. And he said, instant hand, can we save the ship? I said, yes, sir, I think we can. <laughs> Obviously, I'm here, we did. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so those situations happen, and you can trace it back. <clears throat> you know, it's just like your, little bit, your own business. You look at certain procedures that you have done, and once in a while you see a little fl red flag pops up. If you don't jump on that little flag and put it out, it's going to increase, bigger ones, and pretty soon a whole bunch of come at one time. And that's what happens on just about all of the uh, calamities on Navy ships. <coughs> the other two incidences, one was a grounding, that was a screw up. And uh, the other, was a ship hit a, hit a um, fishing boat, and that was probably a screw up too. I mean, all these things are going on all the time. You can't sit up on a chair in the bridge and expect everything to go. You've got to get around and see with your eyes what's going on, how the procedures are, so forth and so on. And if something you detect, nail it. Uh, somebody said, well, they lost steering power. Well, that's a bunch of junk. Because in the steering engines, you have two, a port and starboard. 
and they're big electric motors. And up in the bridge you have a, a barrel <coughs> switch. And you're, if you're on the port motor, the switch is there. You can instantaneously switch the starboard by switching it over. And then if that doesn't work, you have somebody back and after steering that can instantaneously take over and steer the ship. So, I just want to get that. We can, I'll let you have some questions here if you want. But the other thing that some lives is the Korean thing. That's horrible. We aren't doing one single thing. You've heard me since I've been here that the only thing the North Koreans understand is if you tell them something and you do it, a great big stick on the side of the head. That's the only thing they understand. <coughs> Politics and um, economics is not going to solve the problem. They're bound to determined to take over South Korea on their terms. Now, how could we solve what's going on now? I think Haley, or Ambassador Haley to the UN, fantastic comment. She said the UN been kicking the can down the road all these years, and now it's somebody's got to stop it. That's the problem. <clears throat> My boss was was military, but you go to the UN and ask them for some help, they never paid attention. And you see, we kind of saw, but it has been solved. Remember a couple years ago, a South Korean became the Secretary General of the United Nations, and I thought, oh my. This guy can do something for humanity. No, didn't do a damn thing. What he should have done is got the two parties together, sit down, and we're not going to leave this room until we solve the problem. And the problem can be solved. Not everybody's happiness, but it can be solved. What should be done? You know, really, the hard, cold facts. How would we solve today's problem? You'll be appalled, but you eliminate the top echelon to change that thinking and allow some of the younger people to get in there and start to think. Now that'd be very unpopular. And you can, you know, like, like I have heard on the TV this morning, there's a group of people far left that's criticizing Trump because he's too tough on South Korea. Well, you know, totally pay attention to that. People said the same thing about Hitler, didn't they? That's right, we said. Go back in history, and you see this, to me, is so frustrating because you know this could have been averted if the right people had just shut up and sit down and we're going to solve it. Right now, who knows what's going to happen? Uh, Trump has laid all these things out, made these statements. He's not carrying them out. Of course, North Korea <laughs> is another Obama. They'll say things to hell with him. <clears throat> Wait till the ninth. What's going to happen on the ninth? Well, you're sitting here shaking your head, maybe. What if somebody, one of North Korea, shot a missile and it crossed over the United States? Geez, I would hope we'd go berserk. But they did that to Japan. <laughs> or who shouldn't have done that? But let me tell you something. It's just going to continue on and on and become more dramatic. All right. Anybody got questions? Warren, one question. Uh, regarding to Korea, one thing that seems to me that's not talked about, forgetting all the, the politics, forgetting all the psychology uh, about the different leaders, whatever, there's one underlying fact which seems to be not mentioned, and isn't it correct that we are still essentially in a state of war with them? Oh, fact, yes. You know, I mean, we've, we've had an the armistice, but it's never, and so from right. North Korea's standpoint, they are still at war with us. Armistice, right. temporary cessation of hostilities. Yeah. It used to come up all the time over there when I was there. <coughs> That's what, why wasn't that solved? The UN just sits there and watches the world go by. Does that mean because it, we're still at war technically, that the Congress doesn't have to okay any aggression or any movement towards North Korea? I can't answer that. I don't know. Because you'd have to shoot That me. never bothered me. <laughs> 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 we, we had, when I was there, yeah, we had a great, I, think, <laughs> I told you the chain of command was me and the four-star Army General, U.S., the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and the President of the United States. That was the chain of command. Right. And we could institute hostilities or 
Well, we did a couple times, right. shot them, and, uh, but we had a system. We thought it out, spent hours and hours thinking it out, and little red flags. And if this little thing popped up, we made note of it, and we'd do this, and if the little rag flags kept popping up quicker, quicker, we'd take this action. So we had thought things out. Of course, at the time, things could change, but at least we had a plan, and we wouldn't get lulled into some complacency if we didn't feel like going to war. We had thought this thing out, and if this, this, this happened, this is what we do. Of course, it's not irretractable, but for all practical purposes, that was it. Steve, my, my question was not relative to our leadership, because frankly, I don't trust Trump to manage it in a good fashion. But what I think we overlook is whether Kim Jong-il is crazy or not, we are still at war, and we have a war that we need to cease. This is not just, it is not just a crackpot. And we have that. We are at war, and we have not solved that war in decades. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why we got 22,000 troops right along the border. And uh, whether we want, if the North Koreans came across, uh, it would be a question of us deciding whether we wanted to shoot. We'd shoot. And that was the name of the game. Shoot and ask questions later. Mm -hmm. Well, how influential is China, do you think, in the decision making? China is wary of them because they're sort of, they're, they're irrational. That's their data. You have a clue how they think and don't try to think that way. And, but China won't go to, they won't go the old one. I don't think they, if the, the North Koreans are drowning, I'm, I don't think they'd jump in with, with both feet. <coughs> Warren? Uh, I mean, we've got some analog in the current situation, um, thinking of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Um, I understand that Korea is a peninsula and not an island, but would a naval blockade of North Korea have any kind of effect on them in terms of their ability to export or import? Well, they got so much land with China, they could get across there. <coughs> Probably not. Most of the trade is coming across the border. I mean, whatever you do has got to be in whole measures. Because the last thing, I'm not so sure they <coughs> open up artillery on the soul because they want South Korea. And, um, well, anyway, but it's got to be something so dramatic that they, have the, they don't have the power to retaliate. And that's like getting rid of the whole top echelon. <coughs> Back to the, uh, the ships that, that ran aground and, and hit other ships, is it possible that there were any infiltration of electronics and somebody uh, jimmy with it? Uh -huh. You have radars on the ship, surface search and air search. Surface search can go out 20 odd miles, at very, very accurate. And you've got a whole group of people on watch and see combat information center. And they track these contacts, air and surface. They pick up a surface contact, and they, they we have a great big board in there. Uh, it has a compass rolls underneath it. It moves around with your own ship. So it's a visual picture, and you plot it. And the first thing you do once you get a contact is you come up with a CPA, the closest point of approach. And so you know whether you should watch that or not. And if it's way couple miles, you don't pay much attention to other than watch it. But if it's going to be close, you're tracking that. And in my instructions to the, the officer of the deck were, we're going to, even if we have the right of way, the person on the right has the right of way, we will not hold it. We will not prove a point. We, I will take measures early on so there's no extremist situation. Some people, for whatever reason, well, I'm going to light it the right of way, I'm going to hold on. And then, geez, everybody's on pins and needles. And no, take action first. Um, whether you have one contact or half a dozen or a dozen, you can still track everyone that way. As I say, it's, it's so basic. But if you haven't been trained along those lines, I mean, 
who knows? Is it, is it true that both uh, ships were hit amidship? Yeah. The, um, which, which the Fitzgerald they were, they, was, and, and they were large. They were larger ships. That were hit. Yeah, what did he so go right over the hit any larger. <laughs> <laughs> And so presumably their track had been pretty much. Well, the tracks are committed. Yeah. On paper, and but the Fitzgerald hit by that big uh, gas tanker yeah. uh, on the starboard side. I mean, it looked like the damn fish zero went right in front of him. Yeah. Uh, the guy must have been going astern because if he was going, going um, ahead, hell, he'd have gone all, all the way through the ship. Yeah. And then the McCain, not too much on that. They got hit in the port side aft. But who knows? Hmm. The Navy is not, <laughs> not going to bear their soul, I don't think. They shouldn't. Hmm. Because it's so, I mean, the pitiful part about it is guys are killed, people are killed. I guess they're all male. But what do you think that, in general, the military think about this now? What the military thinks about what? North Korea. North Korea? Yeah. Basically, like me. <laughs> <laughs> because you can see it's going to get out of hand. Everybody sat and watched all the Jews uh, being gassed, shook their hands, and moaned about it. Yeah. I guess that's what's so frustrating. Uh, you can't do a thing about all of this when you when you common sense says this is going to happen. Anyway, that's enough to stir the pot.